Greetings, Peanutians, and welcome to my version 253 quality of life and changes highlight video. With version 253 comes with it a bunch of quality of life and general changes. To get us started, the first of the big changes is the Lotus Remaster, and I'm not saying Redux, 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 because I don't know how to pronounce that. So yeah, we're, we're just gonna call it Remaster. With the remaster, it introduces a brand new pitch boss item, and that being the Total Control Android Heart. And along with that new boss item, the pitch boss set itself has now been expanded 10 total slots max. As for skill improvements in the patch, there's actually quite a few nice quality of life updates included here. The first of which that I'm personally excited for is the fact that the rings, such as continuous rings, can now be easily seen on your hotbar if you have them mapped as a hotkey. That means we can finally see our continuous ring activation and cooldown times to better time attacks, rather than looking at the cluttered mess of the active buff bar at the top right corner. The only problem with the update for the continuous ring on this fact is the fact that it only shows the charge up time, cooldown, and when it activates. It doesn't specifically show you the 8 seconds activation that it has. And next time, maybe add that change as well. Another nice little skill change is that if you have the Master or the Meister Smithing level crit damage skill unlocked, you no longer need to wait for any cooldowns as that has been entirely removed. The next big highlight for this patch is the changes to the guild system. Specifically, it is now easier for mule guilds to reach a base amount of guild skill points to get a total of 15 points into 3 different skills at a single time with far less effort. As we know now, guild skills are dependent on how much you complete as a guild for the weekly mission points, guild culvert, and flag race. For weekly points, each member can now contribute a total of 10 points total rather than 5 points per member. Furthermore, flag race has now been made easier for everyone as the minimum points reward has now been changed to 300 points per flag race rather than 100, and allowing those for a lack of experience in flag race to contribute more to their mule guild or their main guilds. And most importantly, the factor that is usually the deciding variable behind whether or not you're able to get 15 points across 3 skills is the guild culvert. Guild culvert no longer is solely based on total points and guild ranking percentages anymore. Your guild now only needs to get to a minimum of 6,000 points to get enough points to get 3 maxed out guild skill points a week. That is assuming you max out for weekly mission points and flag race. To give a little bit of perspective, my mule guild, Peanut Jar, usually ranges from 150 to 180 hundred thousand points per week, and we only usually get around 21 or 23 points per week. Now we'll be able to easily get 25 points per week, which that means 25 plus 10 plus another 10 is 45, which means we will have 15 guild skill points across 3 different skills now. And an even bigger change, the guild skills themselves now have a flat cooldown of 60 minutes for all skills, no matter their level. Furthermore, you can actually bypass their cooldowns entirely by paying 30 mil mesos. Though that's still 30 mil per, which is still nice, but a little pricey, but nonetheless a welcome change in my opinion. Guild buffs and their potions have also gotten a change, that being that you must now click on the Guild Regular Support button on the Guild UI window to receive those items now. The quest for such items are now removed. And the last of the changes to the guild system is that the weekly reset is now moved to the weekly boss reset, that being the Wednesday to Thursday in-game transition. Next on our list of big changes are the boss improvements. As there are several changes and there's multiple bosses, I'll just list them out in rapid succession. Guardian Slime's red laser attack now has a longer cast time of 44%. This allows you to better see and move out of the way of this attack. Lucid now has a better indicator for the dragon spawn attack, that being a giant green fart cloud. Gloom's tentacle attacks now have a more accurate highlight indicator for when it attacks now. Virus Hila now has a cooldown timer for each of its FMA cycles, removing the need to look at the hourglass in the background. And as for Dark Nil, yeah, balls, gone. And Black Mage now has better indicators for the laser attacks in P3, though when I did a test run to get some footage, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, maybe I'm just blind. Kalos themselves actually has a lot of nice changes. Those being the fact that your charges for cleansing the systems is now faster by 1.5 times for easy mode, and 2 times as fast for all the other modes. Stupid Breath Attack now has a 33% longer cast time, which means it's slower, which allows for better dodging. Kalos also has a timer for his FMA attack now, and there is now also a notice for when he actually does the Breath Attack, in case he's not on your screen or your teammates just don't know how to call out things. For Kaling's fight, there has also been improvement throughout each phase and mode. The Tiger Boss's electrical release skill, which I think is called Puddles mechanic, has its cast time increased by 33% in P1 and 2. That same mechanic is a lot more visually clear for phases 1 and 2 now, and thank god because I'm blind as heck. And the last of the boss changes is to Damien. Damien now phases and starts in P2 with the HP you drop him down to in P1. The next on the quality of life and change list is the improvements to some items. I'll be skipping some and attempting to focus on some more general and important changes. Feel free to look at the patch notes in the description for the full list. The first of these changes are the damage skin slots max limit has been increased from 60 up to 96. 
Multiple instances of Soul Urta will now be issued in a single stack, rather than clogging your inventory as single rewards. Items with expiration dates such as MVPs, Flames, Cubes, and Honor Medals now all have the same expiration date that when they drop from bosses. Expiration date being one second before reset for that item's last date of duration. And the only issue that I have with this is that I'm going to assume it's getting fixed later on as well. But if you're doing this across several bossing meals in a given day, just be sure to take the items out of storage and then put them back into storage as putting new items into the storage does not combine the stacks for some reason. The next to the changes of this patch are the changes to the profession skill system. The first of those is the fact that the harvestable flowers and ores and training maps are no longer there. Both the craftable and the raw items from those things have now been moved to the Ardent Mills harvesting maps. And now for a big change that everyone has been looking forward to that Nexon somehow dropped the ball on, are the addition of the mystical familiar cubes. I'm not going to bother going into detail as it's literally the most worthless and redundantly added item ever. If you want an explanation on why, please refer to Thumpsy's video linked now. And I'm not going to bother explaining it because he hammers every point so much better than I ever could, so please refer to his video for that explanation. Next on our list is some UI improvements, and once again, as there's a lot, I'll be only highlighting ones that I find the most significant and important. The first of which is our character UI, and turns out drop right has always been physically kept at 400%. Go figure. Next is item extraction. Extracting items in Artemel has now been increased from the current amount of 10 upwards to 30 at once. And be sure to not accidentally extract your whole inventory, folks. Some people have already started saying that they've done that already. Another big highlight is the Legion improvements. Instead of calculating raid power based off of our Star Force and the levels for each character, it has now changed to a character's level and their combat power. Furthermore, all of the Legion buff coupons now have a weekly limit of 20 instead of 10, and that goes for all three of the different levels as well. And that also includes the Black Flames, that being 40 per week rather than 20 per week. The max limit for Legion coins has also been increased for Supreme and Legendary ranks. And the last of the Legion changes is the removal of the daily coin quest in exchange for a weekly coin quest. You will instead be required to kill 100 regular dragons and 200 gold dragons to get 200 coins per week. And just some random stuff I discovered and or were added to the patch notes after writing out the script for this video are the following. Monster Blooms are now able to give you every single monster from 1 star to 5 star except for the special rarity mobs. Those still have to be collected via their completion requirements. Honor Medals are now able to be used in bulk, like with Node Stones, except the money pouches, those are still in the stone age of manual pressing. Next on, add that to, please. And another thing they neglected to add in the patch notes on release was the fact that we can now use our arcane and granite symbols in bulk to go straight to the equipped ones. No more is inventory space making it a pain for people like me. Yeah, I got a bit of a hoarding problem. Leave me alone. Hi everyone, Peanut here again. If you found this type of video helpful, please let me know down in the comments if you wish for me to do a quality of life slash changes video for each update for future updates. And if you did find this helpful or informative, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel for more. With that being said, thanks for watching the continued support, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye!